In this training, we will examine judging the relay exchange zones, the best positioning for observing the exchanges, and the possible problems in judging them. For more information, please consult a registered National Federation official or USA Track and Field Certified official. Let's begin by looking at typical track markings for the relay exchange zones. The beginning of the zone is indicated by a yellow line with a short segment pointing into the zone at the right hand edge. This line is 1.1 meters in length, extending outward from the inside of the lane. In the United States, we may also see a yellow or other colored triangle that points in the direction of running to indicate the beginning of the exchange zone. The edge of the line or triangle nearest to the runner in the direction of running is the beginning of the exchange zone. On the opposite end of the exchange zone is another yellow line with a short segment pointing backward into the zone at the right hand edge. Again, in the United States, we may also see a yellow triangle pointing back into the exchange zone. The edge of the line or triangle furthest from the runner in the direction of running is the end of the exchange zone. Please note, the international marking, the line, does not extend the full width of the running lane. The triangle, when used, does. On most tracks, we may also have additional markings. At the midpoint of the exchange zone will be a short line, 40 centimeters in width, to indicate such. It will be of a contrasting color to the track surface and is centered in the lane perpendicular to the lane line. 10 meters before the beginning of the exchange zone, there will be another line, 60 centimeters in length, centered in the lane and perpendicular to the lane line, or a small triangle to indicate the beginning of the acceleration or fly zone. This zone is only used in the 4x100 and 4x200 meter relay events. The outgoing runner may position themselves anywhere inside this zone, but no closer to the incoming runner than the line or triangle indicates. Exchanges may not be initiated or made in this zone. These general markings appear in each exchange zone on the track. Next, let's look at the position of the umpires in each exchange zone. The proper placement of the umpires is essential in order to accurately and fairly judge the exchange of the baton from the incoming runner to the outgoing runner. In this example, we have six umpires in each exchange zone. Looking at exchange zone 1, we can see that three umpires, A, B, and C, are positioned inside the track, and three more umpires, D, E, and F, are positioned outside. Umpires A and D have responsibility for judging two things. One, was the receiving or outgoing runner completely within the acceleration zone? And two, was the baton, not necessarily the competitor, inside the beginning of the exchange zone before the pass attempt began? In this example, umpire A will be judging lanes 1 through 4, and umpire D will judge lanes 5 through 8. Umpires B, C, E, and F will judge the end of the exchange zone. They're responsible for evaluating two things. One, is the exchange made in the exchange zone? And two, is the outgoing runner in sole possession of the baton before the baton leaves the exchange zone? Since there is more traffic and hence more motion in the exchange zone, each umpire will only evaluate two lanes. Umpire B has lanes one and two, C has lanes three and four, E has lanes 5 and 6, and umpire F has lanes 7 and 8. Here are the approximate positions and responsibilities for the umpires in the second exchange zone. Here are the approximate positions and responsibilities for the umpires in the third exchange zone. Notice that while the positions are still outside the track surface, some umpires may be positioned either in front of or behind the end of the exchange zone. Please also note, these positions are approximate and may vary depending on the number of lanes being used, the physical surroundings of the track, or other factors. It's important that the umpire be in the best position to fairly and accurately judge the exchange, which may mean they must move to have as unobstructed a view as possible. Next, Let's look at the position of the outgoing runner in the acceleration zone. As we can see, the direction of running is right to left, is indicated by the yellow arrow. The short blue line indicates the beginning of the acceleration zone. Remember that the edge nearest to the incoming runner is the actual beginning of the acceleration zone. 
The outgoing runner has taken a position as indicated with one foot to the left and the other to the right of the blue line. This is an illegal position as the right foot is outside the acceleration zone. The outgoing runner has moved their foot to a position on the blue line to the left of the leading edge of the line. This is a legal position for beginning use of the acceleration zone. The single most important thing to remember when judging a relay exchange is that the position of the baton and who has sole possession of the baton are the determining factors in whether the exchange is legal. Let's begin our review of the exchange by looking at the beginning of the exchange zone. Here we can see that the baton has not yet entered the exchange zone. The incoming runner, in black, still has sole possession of the baton, and the outgoing runner, in gray, is moving toward the beginning of the exchange zone. Next, the runners have begun the exchange action. Notice the position of the baton. Both runners have a hand on the baton, or simultaneous possession. Even though both runners are still in contact with the track surface outside, or to the right of the line indicating the beginning of the exchange zone, it's the position of the baton that matters. In this case, the outgoing runner has simultaneous possession of the baton while the leading part of the baton is in the exchange zone. This is not a violation since the front portion of the baton is inside the exchange zone. This demonstrates a legal pass of the baton. The outgoing runner, in gray, is in sole possession of the baton and the baton is entirely within the exchange zone. This, however, would be an illegal pass. The outgoing runner, in gray, has taken sole possession of the baton, but has not yet reached the beginning of the exchange zone as indicated by the yellow line. As such, the umpire would raise a yellow flag to indicate a potential violation and make note of the heat, lane, and team, and pass this information on to the head umpire. We move now to the end of the exchange zone. In this first example, we can see that the incoming runner, in black, is still in sole possession of the baton. The outgoing runner, in gray, has not touched the baton at this point. In this case, nothing has happened to create a violation. In the second example, the exchange has been initiated, but the outgoing runner has not taken sole possession of the baton. As in the previous case, this is not a violation, since the baton is still completely within the exchange zone. In our third example, a violation has occurred. The outgoing runner, in gray, has taken sole possession of the baton, but has done so when the baton is outside the end of the exchange zone. This is perhaps the most difficult to judge, since the number of runners at the end of the exchange zone may obstruct the line of sight of the umpire. It's important the umpire get to the best position to see the baton, the outgoing runner, and the track marking that indicates the end of the exchange zone. The most important part is that the outgoing runner be in sole possession of the baton before leaving the exchange zone. Lastly, here's an example of a legal pass. The outgoing runner in gray has taken sole possession of the baton before any part of the baton has exited the exchange zone. The umpire should raise a white flag to indicate that the exchange was legal. In judging the start and end of the exchange, it's most important to remember that it's the position of the baton and not the position of the runners that matters. The exchange must take place within the 20 meter exchange zone and sole possession of the baton by the outgoing runner is necessary. A word on drop batons. When a baton is dropped during an exchange, it's the responsibility of the runner that dropped it to pick it up. If the baton is dropped prior to the exchange zone, the incoming runner would be responsible for retrieving it. If it is dropped inside the exchange zone by either the incoming or outgoing runner, then the runner that dropped it must retrieve it. If the baton is dropped during simultaneous possession, then either runner may retrieve it. If the baton falls outside of the running surface, the runner that dropped it must retrieve it, and they must return to the running surface at the point where they exited. They cannot advance the baton forward from a position outside the running surface. To do so would be a violation and would be reported to the head umpire. 